What do we know about how much blue light is given off from a smart device? This video is all about blue light. In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the secrets of how blue light damages our skin and what we can do to prevent this. High energy visible light, HEV, is blue light. Sources of this type of light is predominantly from the sun, but we do get exposure from our smart devices. So from our phones, iPads, laptops, TVs, they are all emitting blue light. Now, what's really important to note, HEV rays are just a little shorter than UV rays, which we know are responsible for skin cancer and skin damage. This is important to be conscious of because HEV can lead to many types of skin disorders in the future, such as hyperpigmentation, inflammation, irritation, impaired healing, uh, skin sensitivity, dryness, wrinkles, uneven skin tone, and loads more. What do we know about how much blue light is given off from a smart device? Primarily, the main source of blue light comes from the sun. And that is the type of blue light that we should be concerned about. Given the recent advancement in technology and the smart devices that we have, there is a cause for concern with using these smart devices. But the research shows that you need to have somewhere between 100 to 200 hours of continuous use with smart devices to have the same dose of damage compared to being in the sun. So being in the sun all day um, or being exposed to UV lights all day through a window, you need to have the equal amount through smart devices to have the same damage. And that equal amount is known to be somewhere between 100 to 200 hours of continuous exposure to that smart device. Now, working from home, yes, this risk is going up. So there are some people who are continuously on their laptops, continuously on their phones, but generally we do have a break. Now it's definitely too early to detect the full impact of these relatively new devices on our skin, but the research does suggest that there is a genuine cause for concern. Unlike UV rays, HEV is not responsible for skin cancer, but there is scientific research to show that it is affecting the aging of the skin. It does this by releasing free radicals onto the skin and these free radicals bind onto our DNA and other proteins and components of our skin and cause oxidative damage. How do we protect our skin against this type of visible light? Now chemical sunscreens, they do not protect you against HEV. They protect against UVA and UVB only. What you need to protect your skin against HEV is a different type of sunscreen. And essentially it's physical ingredients. So ingredients like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide could potentially protect your skin against HEV. Now I'm saying potentially because there is some gray area with these ingredients. So they are proven when used at a certain strength of 6% or more, they can to some extent protect you against HEV, but it all depends on the size of these molecules. It's very difficult to tell when you look at a packaging, but the way you can tell is by how the product applies on your skin. So when the particles are small, they don't provide a cast or a white pasty layer over the skin and look aesthetically pleasing. These products are very, very unlikely to protect you against HEV. In order for zinc oxide or titanium dioxide to give you sufficient protection, they have to be of a large molecular size. So this is 200 nanometers or more. And like I said, you won't necessarily be able to find this information looking at the back of the bottle. But the way you would know is if the product leaves a cast on your skin or a super, super pasty look and you know that there is something on your skin providing you with a physical barrier against the HEV light. And those are the types of skin barriers that you can use to protect your skin against HEV light when it comes to zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. The next product is actually an excellent alternative to protecting your skin against HEV, and that is an antioxidant such as vitamin C. 
Antioxidants are great because they neutralize the free radicals that are given off from blue light that cause damage to your skin. And they, they neutralize these, these free radicals and stop the oxidating process and prevent that damage from happening. So if you can find a vitamin C product that is stable, that is effective, of a good concentration and of a good formulation that is able to penetrate into the skin, then that is a perfect alternative. I do personally use this product. It is one of my essential ingredients in my skincare routine. I'm not going to give recommendations because that's not what the aim of this video is. But vitamin C is a great antidote to blue light damage. Now, the last product which I wanted to talk about is iron dioxide. Iron dioxide of 3% or more is known to protect your skin against HEV as proven by scientific research. Now, this product is primarily found in tinted SPF. So products like La Roche-Posay SPF 50 Tinted Moisturizer, these products which are tinted, they have this physical barrier in them, which is the tint, and that's primarily from the iron dioxide, and that protects you against blue light. Now, there was actually some studies done comparing this type of tinted moisturizer with the iron dioxide compared to makeup, and they found that wearing makeup alone was nowhere near as effective as having iron dioxide in a tinted moisturizer. So the best advice I have from this video to give to you guys is to just protect your skin against the sun, take the measures, wear your sunscreen, find a sunscreen that has a filter that protects you against HEV and you're all good. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I will try to get back to you. Thanks for watching this video guys. Mm -hmm.